Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here as a representative of higher education. As most of you know, universities have for many years played a leadership role in educating young people in a multicultural and international environment that forces greater understanding and the peaceful resolution of differences among diverse nations and people. Very much in tune with the mission and goals of the United Nations, the Journalist and Writers Foundation, and the Peace Islands Institute. We have long known that discrimination, hatred, and bigotry of all kinds are at their core based primarily on ignorance, and that the best weapon to end this discrimination and bigotry is education at all levels, including higher education. Faculty and administrative leaders at our universities have also taken the lead in support of sustainable growth and development and the protection of our environment. Efforts from recycling trash, Earth Day activities, renewable energy projects, and lead construction projects are just a few of the many environmentally friendly activities that exist on virtually all of our campuses. Universities have also had a long history of working in partnership with private business, NGOs, and governments to solve society's most vexing problems, including poverty, access to affordable health care, and sustainable development worldwide. As president of Quinnipiac University, I'm greatly honored to join with all of you here tonight to celebrate the many outstanding contributions of our event sponsors, the Journalists and Writers Foundation and the Peace Islands Institute. In particular, their support for education, sustainable development, and the role of the pub public-private partnership. At Quinnipiac University, we have many institutes and projects that contribute to these same goals, including the following. Ireland's Great Hunger Museum and Ireland's Great Hunger Institute at Quinnipiac University document the terrible human rights abuses and hunger of the Irish famine in the 19th century and serves as a reminder of the consequences of poorly conceived government policies and the continued existence of famine, starvation, and malnutrition in many parts of the world today. In conjunction with our Albert Schweitzer Institute, our departments of nursing, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and sports medicine have sent teams of students to Nicaragua, Guatemala, and other developing countries to provide health care services to the local populations. This not only helps people in need, but also generates in students a lifelong commitment to service. Again, in conjunction with our Albert Schweitzer Institute, our School of Business runs a micro-lending program in Nicaragua. The program provides loans to both individuals and small businesses in their own Nicaragua. School of Business has also implemented dedicated courses in sustainable business practices and social enterprise. And it has many substantial faculty and student exchange programs with universities throughout the world, including in Turkey, Hungary, Poland, China, and Ireland, to name just a few. And finally, our relatively new 250-acre York Hill campus in Hamden, Connecticut, has been developed as a green campus, featuring electricity powered by an extensive collection of solar panels, vertical wind turbines, geothermal, and soon to be added fuel cells. The solar panel part of this project is a good example also of private-public partnership, and would not have been possible without the generous support from the state of Connecticut to Quinnipiac, a private university, through their renewable uh, energy fund with over a million dollars in support of that project. Let me add that these are but a few examples of projects and activities that exist on almost all of our university campuses that contribute to international cooperation, educational exchanges, sustainable development, public-private partnerships, and world peace. As a representative of higher education, I am proud of our collective contributions to these areas. And I want to thank again our sponsoring organizations here tonight, the Journalist and Writers Foundation and the Peace Islands Institute, and of course, the United Nations, 
for your leadership in these worldwide efforts and for bringing us all together tonight. Thank you.